Welcome to the Way to Go podcast. I'm Bill McMinn from Hinkleville Bible Church. Our youth pastor, Eric, is along with me. And just yesterday, because we're recording this on a Thursday, actually, and yesterday was St. Patrick's Day, and I wanted to talk about it because a lot of people don't really know much Almost about, nobody knows any much about uh St. Maybe Patrick. almost no one. That could be <laughs> accurate. <laughs> yeah, we can go pretty high with that number. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what the stats of almost no one is. If that's like 95% of the population, who in the world is St. Patrick? And I, we look at St. Patrick's Day. It's a booze fest, I think, for some people. It's, it's a day to wear green. Yeah. Kiss me, I'm Irish. Celebrate your Irish heritage. Right. Even if you're not a speck of Irish in you. Right. Uh, what do they eat? The corned beef? Corned beef, potatoes, sauerkraut, cabbage. Sauerkraut. I yeah. don't know. Sauerkraut, really Irish. I don't know. that We put it on Rubens. It was made of cabbage. Cabbage, corned beef, potatoes. Things like that. We always had corned beef. Did you really? Sandwiches. Like growing up, you had a thing like a St. Patrick's Day, you're going to eat corned beef? Yeah, I think it was just like a festive. I mean, we're not to my knowledge. I don't think we're Irish at all. It's also my grandfather's birthday. And right. So he he loves corned beef kind of thing. So well, yeah, I'm, I remember I remember eating it and I never remember enjoying it. Uh, right. We'll say that. <laughs> <laughs> well, unless it's on a Reuben sandwich, there might not be a real way to enjoy it. Although Mark, who's producing our show, loves corned beef hash. Whenever I'm out with breakfast with him, I'll, I'll give you that. Co- like corned beef on a sandwich, I just I just can't do it. Corned beef hash with the fried egg, oof, that's good. You like it, I think right? That's real good. And that may or may not be Irish. I don't even know. Maybe it is. Maybe it's not. <laughs> yeah, maybe right. that's another show. And we'll yeah, it's just do. it's just a day to wear green. Everything's yeah. got to be green. Uh, Pinching people or something? Well, where that comes if you into didn't play? Wear green. I yeah okay. Yeah, pinch them if they don't wear green. Okay, that's it. I just heard about that last. Even night if you're too. not Irish, you yeah. Little, if you didn't wear green, pinch. you get pinched. Everyone's Irish on March 17th. Didn't you know that? Right. Everyone on the planet is Irish. Right. I'm McMinn, so I can really play the Irish card if I want to. I don't because I'm Scottish and I know it. But I mean, because <laughs> I have a nickname, no one knows the difference. I'm McMinn. Of course, you're Irish. Well, there's also Scottish people with nicknames. So. Right, right. Now, I, I look at it and think people should know. I think there's a lot of people that don't really know a lot about the holiday. And for one thing, I mean, we're celebrating St. Patrick as an Irish holiday. He's not even Irish. That's one thing. Mm -hmm. Like, the guy wasn't even Irish. Actually, he was from Britain, and when he was 16 years old, and this is in the 400s A.D., like 5th century A.D. We're talking like St. Patrick lived, so what are we, 1,500 years ago, 1,600 years ago. Like, we're talking way back there. So this this kid was captured, abducted. From his family, torn away from his own family at the age of 16. By pirates. By Irish pirates. Taken back to Ireland, sold into slavery. He was a shepherd, and he worked there for six years as a shepherd. And there is really where he found God. He started seeking God. He became a devout Christian during Hmm. that time. And God revealed to him in a vision, you're going to be free soon. And then your ship's ready. So when God told him his ship was ready, he he bolt it man he booked he went 200, 200 miles, miles to a is what port I read. yeah to convince sailors man. to let him get on the ship gets on the ship winds up in france he doesn't even go back almost starves to death it was a whole big story in rigmarole role of him actually getting back to his family finally gets reunited with his family studies christianity but he feels this call you know he just felt a call when he was there even that wow. he could just hear the kids like irish kids just calling out to him you know we need your help i almost think of like paul's macedonian call where he sees the man inviting him to come to macedonia to Mm -hmm. bring the gospel like there was just a call that he felt and this is a quote i saw a man this is actually a quote from saint patrick i saw the man coming as it were from ireland his name was victoricus and he carried many letters and gave me one of them. I read the heading, The Voice of the Irish. As I began the letter, I imagined in that moment that I heard the voice of those people who were very near the wood in Falklut, which is beside the Western Sea, and they cried out as with one voice, We appeal to you, holy servant boy, come and walk among us. And so here is his call, you know, just come walk among us. That's what they they wanted, and that's what he felt the call was, just come and walk among us. But that call that he felt in his life, I mean, he's got to go back to the people that enslaved them in the first place. It can't be safe. You know, you're not Irish yourself. Right. Don't have that Celtic background. So now you're going to come from Britain, which is a Roman colony, Mm -hmm. and you're going to come into a place that's not a Roman colony, uh, it's more of a pagan culture, and there you're going to now 
go ahead and work. And I think there had to be a lot of danger there, actually. Yeah, definitely. Especially he's been gone for six years, taken from his family by pirates. Right. So I wonder, I, I don't want to discount all this uh, trauma, essentially, all this har crazy hardship. Right. Uh, you, you flee for your life 200 miles. You convince the sailor to get on his ship. You come back, you're not really close to home. You still got to get there. Right. All the, Just all that he went through, all of those hardships and the perseverance it takes to to overcome, right? It's just mind blowing. He's quite a guy. I mean, he really was. And I mean, how old is he at this time? Well, at that time he was sixteen. He's probably about twenty two when he comes back. Yeah. And he studied for years. It would be a number of years before he actually returned to Ireland. Okay. And when he did, when he really felt strongly about it, because he was he felt the call. And then he went to study Christian uh, Christianity. So he went and studied in a seminary, I guess okay. you would call it, or a school. And they taught him and trained him in Christianity. He still felt like he wasn't really prepared enough, but the evidence was that God did want him there. I mean, the evidence of oh, what yeah. happened when he got there was God was definitely with him. So who is St. Patrick? I mean, St. Patrick was a missionary from England to the Irish people hmm. in the 400s. So the 5th century A.D., He's a missionary there telling these people about Christ. These people are pagan. They don't yeah. they don't know anything. They don't really have that belief in God. Not they don't Christian have any area. biblical background, not a Christian area. But he went to live among them. And he just started working with these people. And I mean, God did great things because of it. And so it another, seems as if they were pretty open to it then, if they were accepting. I would Assuming think they, they were. I would think that they saw the the fact that there was something empty with the way that they were going sure. and all their pagan ways. They must have sensed an emptiness that there was something better about with their, following with Christ. their idol worship. Mm -hmm. uh, we're assuming here they, they had to right. Mm -hmm. So he said one of the quotes that I have is Patrick came to view his enslavement as God's test of his faith during his six years of captivity. He became deeply devoted to Christianity through constant prayer. And that was really, I think, one of the keys to his life. I mean, he was a man who was constantly praying, always seeking God all the time. And in a vision, he saw the children of pagan Ireland reaching out their hands to him and grew increasingly determined to convert the Irish to Christianity. So even before he leaves and he escapes, he is, feels a sense of call. He yeah. feels a sense of... I need to come back here and help these people come to Christ. And it's interesting because his master, a guy named uh, Milku, he was a high priest of Druidism, which is a pagan sect that held major religious influence over the country at the time. So the guy that was his master is actually Judaism. a priest in paganism. And here's this kid who starts out at 16 years old right. is a Christian. So a yeah. Christian thrown right in the middle of this pagan world. And I just think it's, it's so awesome because he went there and did such a great job. Yeah. What what a testimony, really. Yeah. What a what a testimony of his his courage and his bravery and his um passion to serve right. to serve the Lord, to study um the word of God and to go out and act on it as right. well. Oh, hey, you're you know, you're <laughs> what what was the Druidism guy? Milku right over him. Yeah, Milku. That was his high priest. High yeah, priest, yeah. Whoa, crazy. Right. It's like the story of Esther almost as well. Like, hey, right. like you're working for the, you know, you got to stand up for what's right here. But think about how much sometimes we have, a, it's great, we have a church and we have a lot of people who come here and we know, obviously, you know, I had a small group Bible study on St. Patrick's Day. There's a meeting in my house. So, you know, those are people who are fellow believers. So there's a lot of people around us who are fellow mm -hmm. believers, but still you may have that sense of time that I live in a world that's totally abandoned oh, Christianity, yeah. Oh, yeah. completely abandoned God, and has gone back to more of these pagan things. I mean, you look at all the, the issues in this country, and we have a lot of serious, serious issues. A lot of things people don't even talk about. Rampant mm -hmm. immorality and abuse, and kids that are getting abused, abused and yeah. neglected, and you know, drug issues, we do hear about that some, but I mean, there's a lot, like we think of the big hot topic ones, transgender mm -hmm. and things like that. There's a lot and of under surface issues. Yeah. You well. might, you might go right to them, but I mean, you think of all the, a ton of other issues that we have in our country. And so, yeah, they do need the, the influence of Christ, but St. Patrick also, I mean, they celebrated on the 17th of March cause he died on that day. So it's really, that's why they picked that day. Cause I kind of, I'm not that I ever thought about it. I guess you just, you grow up your whole life. Maybe you don't really question it. You just, yeah. it's March 17th, the St. Patrick's day. It's when you plant snow peas in the North. I remember that. It was like St. Patty's day. That's when you plant your peas. I'm like, Oh, okay. And I remember really? following that. Yeah. 
Yeah, when I had a garden early on, yeah, everyone huh. would plant because it was one of those plants you could plant before, like actually in May, mid-May, where a lot of people plant gardens. You could put the peas in early because they could withstand the frost and the cold nights. Gotcha. And so hmm. you would put them in. So you knew it. St. Patrick's Day was like a day. So other than that, I mean, I didn't really think too much about it. And it was only until yesterday that I, when I was studying it, oh, that's the date of his death. Okay. So anyway, the guy was brave because... You know, there was always a lot of opposition, uh, obviously opposition from some of the pagans, actually opposition in some of his life from other Christians saying he was there for wrong motives. And so he would be a kind of guy like he would only give. And so what he would do if there was a king in a, like a certain area, he would give that guy a gift that there was somebody who was a judge or somebody who was influential in the area. He would bring them gifts, hmm. but he would never take one. Wow. So he never wanted to be accused of somebody who was just there because people were giving him gifts and paying him. That's gotcha. not why. He was there with sincere motives. He really wanted people huh. to come to Christ. And I think that was that sincerity of motive that really drove his success in a lot of ways. Because when you're really determined to do something, you really believe in what you're doing, those true motives are going to show. Yeah, If right. you're not really truly about what you say you're about, then you're probably going to fall short at some point. It's kind of the yeah. wheels are going to come off. I think I heard a sermon on that recently. Yeah. I can't put my finger yeah, on it, though. Weird, huh? That's right. You know, one, one verse right. that came to my mind was James chapter 1, verse 12. And it says, Blessed is the one who perseveres under trial, because having stood the test, that person will receive the crown of life that the Lord has promised to those who love him. Right. And I can't help but think of, of Patrick receiving his crown right. in heaven once, you know, when... Right. Go all the trials that he endured and persevered through and rising above all of them and, and going back to the people right. um, that he was torn from, that right. he, with very opposing views and everything, and I mean, he had, continuing the, to do what is right. They're still celebrating the guy. I mean, you, you look oh, at yeah. the victories that he had with his perseverance and how it paid off. If he died, let's say, at the end of, you know, it could be 480, 490. I don't think anyone really knows, but sometime in that time frame. So he passes away on this March 17th. Now you're you're looking at hundreds and hundreds of years later, people still celebrate. They actually go to church and pray and things like that over actually in Ireland, and they consider him their patron saint. Like they yeah. look at him as a hero. So you go from a total pagan culture turning to christ enough that hundreds of years later you're still celebrating yeah no i that's what i found very interesting in my readings was uh like over in ireland or england or wherever it is they actually go to church on this day like it's right. a like it's a holy day for them right. they where they recognize and and celebrate and remember the life and work of patrick here um it's not it's not that way here right no. not that way at all here no I think, well, I put up a post. I had different people, you know, writing back. You know, a lot of people posted right in the comments. Wow, never knew about this. Didn't know his story. Never looked into it. And that's why I just felt compelled to write the post yesterday because I knew I was going to see plenty of yeah, drinking right. pictures, you right. know, later on in the day. I'm like, you know what? Why not put up a post about what he really did, you know, yeah. aside from how we think of it? And how, how tall was he? Was he like a little I don't know. leprechaun, perhaps? I don't think so. Is, is that where it no, the I don't, legend comes from. no, I don't think so. No, no. Walk around a little pot of gold or yeah, something. No, 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 no. I don't think so. But he was relevant to culture. Uh, one of the things he did was he would take things like they would use bonfires to celebrate their, um, let's say, their pagan days. And he took mm. bonfires to celebrate Easter. And oh, so he would convert it, their thinking to Christianity. They were they would worship the sun. He's the one that came up with the design for the Celtic cross, which is the cross with the Irish designs, but with a circle in the okay. blades. Okay. That's called the Celtic cross. Mm, okay. He he put that sun there. That represents the sun because they were so fixated on that. He wanted them to fix their focus on Christ. Sure. Okay. And so he took it. So to me, I thought it was interesting that he merged was, the two essentially. Yeah. He was relevant to his culture. Like he took gotcha. things that were relevant to them. Like you as a youth pastor would do a Super Bowl party. The Super Bowl is relevant in this culture. A lot of oh, people yeah, watch huge. it. So then you take it and say, okay, well, in Super Bowl, we're going to take it and we're going to, we're going to make it a youth group activity. Mm -hmm. So, Definitely. I mean, I think it could be something like that gotcha. where you okay. just take the things of your culture okay. and you make it relevant. Cool. I don't think that's, that's pretty, okay. Yeah, that's pretty, that is pretty neat that he right. was able to use what's familiar to the people and also present the truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ right. to them as well in, in, on, in a way that they can relate right. to and, and know. 
I think it's a church. I mean, I think it's okay to have, you know, music that people like mm -hmm. or that they're going to relate to or musical styles. Uh, sometimes you, I've seen in my lifetime, I've seen it where a church will be stuck in a style that's back in the 1950s or 40s mm -hmm. and they were 70s and they just don't move from it. Mm -hmm. They won't move like, you know, suit and tie <laughs> stuff. Like they won't move to culture. It's, it's okay when it's not your, your doctrine, it's not right. your theology. It's okay to say, you know what? there are some things here that we can use to point people to Christ and be relevant. You know, the stories you tell, the things that you talk about. So I think he, he was relevant to culture that helped him. Uh, his humility was huge. Uh, one comment uh, I brought was this, or I found was this in point of fact, he was a most humble minded man pouring forth a continuous thanks to his maker for having chosen him as the instrument whereby multitudes who had worshiped idols and unclean things had become the people of God. He looked at himself as, Hey, God just used me multitudes of people. Like I was reading accounts where, and I actually ordered a book that he wrote. So I kind of want to read it, hmm. but there would be these Druids. There would be these people that were pagans hundreds at a time getting baptized. Wow. I mean, huge revivals, masses of people converting over to Christianity. That's like some book of Acts type events right, right. there. I mean, the, he was a prayerful man. He was praying for the power of the Holy Spirit. He did see the power of God working in people's lives. Well, you know what they say about prayer. It works. It works. Yeah, it does work. It actually works. But he wasn't looking for grandeur. Well, you know, I think, you know, we have like, you know, we'll make St. Patrick's Cathedral and it'll be this big grand thing. And, you know, he's in stained glass windows and neat robes and everything. But I have a feeling that's probably not what he would have looked like when he was here. You know, he right. would have probably been a common looking like a common, ordinary, everyday guy walking among the people, talking to them, encouraging them, helping them. I think that's the kind of guy he would have been. Yeah. Going towards the end of the rainbow. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> but they yeah, probably, they probably didn't even come up with leprechauns at that point. Who knows? So I'm sure they'll <laughs> I'm tell you what they didn't have lucky charms. They didn't have lucky charms with their cereal <laughs> in those days. Well, no, another thing going back to his relevance. What is the? Maybe it's not necessarily the relevance. He had the the clover. Yeah, in representation. Shamrock. Is that what's called shamrock? shamrock? Yeah. Um. Yeah. To me, that that's a milkshake. So. Anyways, yeah. I call it a yeah. No, it's, 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 it's a plant. It's their it's the national. So Ireland's national like flower. Okay, for plants. Wait, so he had the three leafed plant on mm -hmm. the single stem, right? Uh, in representation of the Trinity, right? The Father, the Son, the Holy, Holy Spirit. Spirit, right? It's still there. There are three individual pieces, but it forms one shamrock. Even to this day, when they have festivals in Ireland, they wear shamrocks. Oh, okay. Shamrocks represent to he used the shamrock to communicate the Trinity. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Sure. So I thought that was interesting, too, that in the 5th century, that's what he's talking about, the Trinity. They were still working mm -hmm. on the Trinity in the 4th century, still. Huh. Working on some of those doctrines in the church and kind of formalizing and, hey, here's what the Bible teaches and getting those things worked out. And so by the 5th century, I mean, he's right on cutting edge, teaching of the Bible, and he's right there talking about the shamrock, how this is an illustration of biblical truth. And the one thing that I believe made him successful is he communicated truth. And we can communicate a lot of truth to each other. Like you and I can talk to each other. Uh, I can stand up in the pulpit and talk to a lot of people who believe exactly right. like I do. Right. Uh, we can talk to go to a Bible study and encourage people who believe like we do. And I think it's mm -hmm. important that people understand the Certainly. Bible more deeply and whatnot. Certainly. But there's also a point where I look at his life and think, yeah, but this guy, he got outside the, let's say, four walls of the church. He got outside into his community. He got outside where people didn't know yeah. what the message was, and he impacted people there. So you think of our, our teachers, and it could be doctors, carpenters, iron workers, whatever your field is where you're working, you're that Patrick out there in the common day, everyday world where people might not know him. And maybe you go to a workplace where all day long they take the Lord's name in vain. All day long they mock Christ, right. they mock Christianity. Right. And if not by word, by the way that they live, and then be that person among them who's who God is calling to walk among them mm -hmm. and to be that influence. Yeah, like I think certainly. that's a really cool concept. Yeah, I think um, going back to the call on his life, um, where he he's, was saw a vision kind of thing or had yeah. a dream, where... We appeal to you, holy servant boy, to come and walk among us. 
isn't that God's invitation for all of us? Right. Come and walk with me. Right. Come and be with me. Right. Oh, absolutely. And for us, and God's going to send us. He, he, you know, yeah. As, as Isaiah, Isaiah said, you know, here am I, send me. Mm-hmm. And I think that should be the the attitude of all of us. God, send me where you want me to go. How many influence yeah. the people? Yeah, the I great commission. Influence? Go right. into absolutely. all the world. Definitely. Yep. It is. Well, we hope you appreciate this talk on St. Patrick, you know, talking a little bit more about his life. Uh, you can, I went on the Amazon to uh, order a book called The Confessions of St. Patrick. It was $5. So <laughs> a big investment there. I want to read it. I want to see what the guy wrote and what he had to say. You may want to as well. You guys all have a great and a blessed week.